Well, thank you for choosing the Iowa College Access Network uh, for your financial uh, literacy needs. Uh, my name is Eric Danielson, and today we're going to be talking about interpreting award letters. Now, one of the first things that we want to talk about when interpreting award letters is making sure that you understand what the cost of attendance of the college is. Uh, cost of attendance of the college includes tuition and fees and room and board, but that's not the only thing that is included in there. Most times when you're talking with colleges and you ask them how much they cost, they'll give you the tuition and fees and room and board, but there are also going to be some indirect costs. There are going to be books, transportation, or personal expenses as well that the college could estimate between three or five thousand dollars for the school year. You put all of those together and that's where we have our COA or our cost of attendance. Now, award letters are going to come uh, to you usually in March, end of March or, or beginning of April possibly if you have all your paperwork in uh, during the senior year. Your award letter is your financial aid package. It's going to list everything that you qualify for there, uh, federally, state possibly, and from the college itself. Um, we, uh, one of the things that we always like to, to go over families with, no matter how many award letters they have, is to really start with taking a look at the direct costs. So when you're interpreting these award letters, whether it's one college, two, three, four, five, however many you have, sit them down kind of side by side. And the first thing that we want you to take a look at is what the direct costs are, what the tuition fees and the room and board is going to be. Some of you might not be living on college campuses, and so your room and board could be an estimated expense, but we still want to include that uh, with, uh, within this process in interpreting your award letter. So when you have those direct costs, the next thing that we want you to do is subtract how much scholarship and grant money that you're receiving from the schools. Now scholarship and grant money is the free money, the money that you're not going to end up having to pay back. So we want to subtract that right off of the cost there. Different colleges are going to have different costs, but depending on how much they give you in scholarship and grant money, some of the schools that you're looking at, even though their sticker price or the direct costs could be a lot higher, maybe they're going to give more scholarship or grant money like this example here, and then your remaining cost there won't be as much. On this example that we have right here, there's a $20,000 difference in the direct cost. But after you take a look at each school and what their scholarship and grant money um, that they're, they're getting at each school, now the difference is uh, just over uh, $1,000 um, per, per year. Now after you get that remaining cost down, another thing that we want you to subtract off of it is any of your personal savings. This could be savings just within a savings account, or it could also be if any of you have been saving 529 plans, how much of those you're planning on spending for the year in lowering down your costs. Subtract your personal savings or 529 plans off of that remaining cost, and now what you have is the amount that you're going to need to borrow. We do this with every family within our office, and at any time if you need any help in interpreting award letters, please give us a call and I'll share that number with you to set up an appointment uh, to where we can help you out at our different locations. Now after you do, uh, do the interpreting the award letter and finding out how much you're going to uh, need to borrow and the difference, the next thing is is going to be a decision time. And when we want to make sure that students make their decision is at least by May 1st of their senior year. That is actually decision day. If you had any uh, deposits that you uh, put down uh, for tuition or housing, um, I can't tell you you're going to get 100% back on those deposits, uh, but you usually at least get a large percentage of that back as long as you notify any colleges that, where you're not going to be going to uh, by May 1st. But when you do make a, a decision, um, then you're going to need to work out a payment plan. And uh, for many students, you're going to have to take a look at student loans. And of course, we have already kind of figured out maybe how much you might need to borrow. Um, but if you're needing to look at other alternative sources, uh, maybe a, a private loan or a plus loan, um, other things, um, that would be the time where to take a look at that. One of the things that we really want students to be thinking about when it comes to borrowing money is however much they're going to borrow in college, are they going to be able to pay it back once you're out? You need to get a realistic idea of what your starting salary is going to end up being. Not every job pays the same. It's a simple statement, but not every job pays the same amount of money. You need to have a realistic idea on what you're going to end up uh, starting off with in the job or the career that you're looking at getting into once you're out of college and that is something that you need to factor in when you're looking at schools and, and interpreting those award letters. How much are you going to borrow over your two, four, however many years you're going to be in college? Can you afford that payment once you're out? We want you to borrow um, 
borrow wisely. And it's not just always about going, again, going to the college that is least expensive. You might have some that are, um, that are on the same level playing field, but even in that case, at some of the colleges that you're looking at, the amount that you're going to have to borrow at any of those schools, I think for some college students, can be too much, more than they, more than they need to. And some students borrow um, some of those indirect costs. This is an area I hadn't talked about earlier, but one of the things we want to encourage you to do is not to borrow for the books, transportation, and personal expenses. Try to pay for those expenses out of pocket if you can, because three to five thousand dollars extra borrowing for one year is a lot of money. You take it times four years, and now you're adding on twelve or sixteen thousand more dollars into the amount on top of what you're already borrowing for your tuition fees and room and board. Um, so we want you to understand your loan limits. If you borrow $80,000, you're going to need to pay back over a 10-year period, which is what most student loans are, paying it back over 10 years um, per month. $800 per month is what it would be if you borrowed $80,000. Now we don't want you to borrow any more than 8 to 12 percent of your starting salary. And if you're looking at a job that is starting, starting salary is going to be around $25,000, then you should just be borrowing eighteen to twenty-seven thousand dollars over your college career. And again, where a lot of students get into trouble over borrowing is they borrow for those indirect costs. It's not only that, but that's where a lot of them get into trouble over borrowing um, there. Now once you have made the decision on the college that you're going to be going to, uh, you need to make sure to finalize your financial aid with that college. That might include um, signing your award letter and getting it back to, back to them. A lot of colleges now, all of this is online electronically, so you can probably take care of it that way. If you need to take out any student loans, typically the best student loans that are going to be available at first will be the, the federal Stafford loans, and you'll need to sign a master promissory note for that. Uh, the colleges will give you that information on how to do that, so you'll need to take care of that master promissory note um, if you need to borrow. And there will also be some entrance counseling uh, along with that too, making sure that there, the entrance counseling is taking you through just some of the basics that you are borrowing this money, you do have to pay it back, and they want to make sure that, they, that you know the terms uh, before uh, signing on the dotted line with that promissory note. Now another way of, of also being able to help pay for your school is with private scholarships. And if you haven't started checking into that, now's the time to do it. Um, I would encourage uh, every senior to be looking at the beginning of their senior year, but even for juniors, there can be some scholarships that are out there that juniors can apply for. And these are some of the areas where you can take a look at. On our website at icansucceed.org backslash scholarships, uh, we have a lot of links to free scholarship searches uh, that are available. It can take some work uh, to do this, but if you can get a $500 scholarship and it took you two hours to complete, that's $250 bucks per hour. It's less money you have to borrow, but most of us would love jobs that paid $250 bucks per hour. So if you look at it that way, it can be well worth doing the time to look for private scholarships. If you need any help on and tips in going through the scholarship process within our video library, uh, we have uh, a presentation like what you're seeing right now about the scholarship process, going through the search and cover letters, writing a winning essay, which I know the, that E-word is always a, uh, a term that most students don't want to hear, uh, but we've got a lot of tips on students on uh, helping them through that process and even not avoiding the scholarships if it fits for you that even have uh, an essay. If you need any help, please feel free to give us a call at 877-272-4692 and set up an appointment at any one of our eight ICANN locations. Thank you very much for uh, visiting with us on interpreting the award letters today, and please give us a call if you have any questions or want to set up an appointment. Thank you.